the mics. <laughs> Congratulations on another season of The Blacklist. I know you're in the middle of shooting uh, this season. And from what I understand, it's a bit of a reset for you guys. The creators and the writers have said that uh, you're sort of resetting the tone after everything went very dark last season. Is that true? Uh, I think we've, um, we've tried to sort of uh, have the tone in, of the show be sort of fluid throughout its lifespan so far. Uh, and. And, and I think that this is part of it. So I don't think this will be, I, I don't think it'll be startling. I don't think it is. Um, it just is an element that's always been part of the show that now is being well nurtured by Reddington. Uh, you know, things are, things have been very bad for quite some time. And he's had to deal with sort of one crisis after another. Last season it was just one crisis after another. And, uh, Things have sort of bottomed out, and I think he finds it a refreshing place to be. Um, and so he's sort of um, like a pig in shit. <laughs> but kind of enjoying the, the, the shit a little As bit. As a pig would. Uh, yes, I think he is enjoying it. He's enjoying it immensely. Uh, well, he's and doesn't seem to be in any real rush to get down back down to business. Um, although he does, you know, he has to pay his rent and he has limited means to pay his rent, and so he. <clears throat> did you? See, did they hit the car in the in the in that trailer? Did you see the car that he was driving around in? Okay, well, <clears throat> that's someone else's car. <laughs> anyway, it's um, the first scene of the uh, of the first episode. It's, yes. it's available online, so we won't be spoiling anything. Ah, to talk okay. about that scene. Okay. Uh, and that is a scene where he essentially, uh, you know, cons his way into taking this car for a He's really just, he's r really just trying to pay the rent. He's kind of bottomed out and is having a pretty good time at this point. He is, yeah. Yeah. And like you said before, in, in previous seasons, or in the last season, it's been one crisis after another, and now he can kind of create his own crises and, and, and enjoy the ride. Yeah, and I think also it allows the show to have a breath and the audience to have a, you know, a breath of fresh air for a moment. Um, and, and listen, there's always been a sort of mix, good mix of, of sort of intensity and, and, and irreverence on the show. Um, but it's nice to every so often be able to put the trouble on the shelf for a moment and, and have a breath of fresh air and have some fun. Uh, and the show has always had that. It's always been part of the show's sort of landscape and character. And, and um, I think we just were, we, we wanted to have fun uh, in, in, in doing it. And, and as you said, it was, um, it had gotten rather dire at the end of last season. And uh, it ended in a, in, a, in a very tough place. And so uh, one of the things that's great about this show and about, and I think because of the strange engine for the show, this guy, is, and, and this was apparent even from the pilot, is you can shift direction in the show very swiftly, and uh, tonally, but also in terms of plot and story, um, things can begin and they can end very, very swiftly. And, um, and so that's what we do, are doing at the beginning of the season, and uh, it's still continuing on. Um, I'm in episode six right now, or just finished episode six, and there's a lot of fun to be had, uh, along with, um, uh, you know, Red's life is, even at its best, Red's life is in peril at all times, it seems. And uh, so he's still faced with that. But he enjoys